Hey everybody, I built a piano grid fretboard and I was inspired by this guy's channel. Check it out. So he is a music teacher who has a guitar teaching related channel and he actually constructed this piano grid fretboard using like a black magic marker and a very pale Telecaster fretboard. And he was able to actually kind of go in there and scribble in all the sections of the guitar fretboard that are the sharp keys or the black keys on a piano. I thought it was a brilliant idea and I was really surprised that no one has actually physically built this before. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna build it in CAD. That way, once it's built in CAD, we can mill it on CNC, we can print it on a 3D printer, or we can even laser etch it on a laser. So once it's a digital file, we can go anywhere with it. So let's get started. Okay, so here we are in CAD, and this is the way I will build my fretboard. We wanna start off with the actual nut width. It's really important with building this piano grid fretboard is the lane that the strings live in. Because what's important isn't the actual string, but what's to the left and to the right of the string, the lane of the string. So we have our actual nut width, we have where the fretboard's going to end, and we can kind of connect these to make sort of a rectangle, right? Now the next thing we want to do is actually place our strings in. So here we have our six strings, right? So now that we laid out our strings with the appropriate fretboard hang, which is the space to the left and the space to the right of the low E and high E, we're golden. So now we've placed our frets in. You can see we got all the frets in here. I chose 22 and this is important because this is going to tell us where the piano grid begins and ends going this way. So now what I'm going to do is put on my grid. You can see there's a quite a few more lines here. So if you look carefully, the grid is going to be these white lines, right? And the white line is basically happening perfectly in between each string. So if I build a grid, the grid will be from the far end here, encompassing all the string, stopping here. That's its grid. And then for the next string, the A, it starts here, goes over the string and ends here. We wanna stop in the middle of the string. So now once we have this, essentially sort of like a grid on the fretboard to play with, we can build a fretboard. This is what it's gonna look like. So what I did was I put in the notes so that I can actually kind of see and kind of figure out where I am. And then I was able to essentially build out the grid. So again, this is like a piano, meaning every time there's a sharp, we're going to basically have a black section of the fretboard. Now, how we're gonna get that black section, we'll get to down the road. So here's our grid. And you can start seeing a pattern emerge, obviously after the 12th fret, it repeats itself. So if I come in here and I turn off my strings and my frets and my grid, turn off the fretboard and see how lovely this looks. It almost looks like some kind of weird font or another language, but you can see the repeating patterns. It's actually quite lovely, really thinking it's not just going to be a functional piece of the guitar. It's going to be actually very pretty, very aesthetic. So this is the point where we just get into sort of like basic 101 guitar building in CAD, and I'm gonna kind of skip that part. All I've done here is extrude my sketch, and it is basically a flat trapezoid, which is our fretboard. The next thing we need to do is basically make a profile for the actual radius. So for this project, I'm just randomly arbitrarily choosing a 12 inch radius. Here's the radius for the front part or the nut of the fretboard the radius for the rear is also a 12 inch radius. If I wanted to compound, I could change them. I'm not gonna bother with that. This is just a straight up 12 inch radius. It's gonna do a quick little loft on here and it basically builds the curve part of it. And so now we have a nice curved fretboard. So there is our radius. So the next part of this is extruding the sections of the piano grid, those black keys. So because we have a curved surface now with that radius, we can't draw on top of it. So we need to make a construction plane that floats above it, which is what I've done here. And now we can project our grid onto that actual construction plane. So what I'm gonna do now is extrude these pieces so that they are their own unique pieces. Think of them sort of like the extra pieces when you're inlaying. So here are my sort of inlaid pieces that I've made. And there they are. So you can see how 
it actually tapers down these inlay pieces with the edge of the fretboard, which is nice. Okay, and so obviously now we need to make a pocket for them. Turn on my board and turn off these pieces. You'll see that there is now a pocket for them inside this maple fretboard. And then I can actually turn them back on and they're inset or inlaid in them. And I have my piano grid. Now at any point in time, I can go in here and I can actually machine the fret lines. The fret lines will be perfectly on there. Thinking in terms of things like the diameter of the end mill, which isn't gonna give me a, a sharp corner. You get as sharp as my smallest end mill essentially, but it won't matter because the fret will be covering the actual border between the maple and the black. And so you'll never ever see a corner, but I'm not at that stage yet. That's the milling stage we're, we're gonna get to in another video. This is just sort of the design stage where we can visualize what this looks like. And you might be thinking, what's the purpose? Like, why would anybody ever build a fretboard like this? What's, what's the why behind it? And the why is actually, again, what drives me and what drives me to create these things on this channel. And that is to kind of approach the instrument differently because we all build the same things. We all build the same guitars. It doesn't matter if there's six strings or eight strings, it's still the same guitar. But something like this may provoke us to play differently, to see the instrument differently and to write music differently. And so when I saw this gentleman who had this first video that inspired me, I actually learned from his channel, he said that all the black keys on a piano are the pentatonic scale. I never knew that. And then I had to look it up. It's true. It's basically an F-sharp major pentatonic. Every black key on that keyboard you could play and it's a pentatonic scale. But it's also about sort of milestones and markers in your actual improv. So if you're improving and you need to move somewhere else, you kind of have sort of a roadmap of where to go and what notes to hit, even if it's just basically trying to understand what a, where the half step is or where the whole step is. So I see this as an opportunity to kind of play differently and to compose differently. It is not supposed to be that this is the fretboard that makes your life easier, nor is this supposed to be that this fretboard is better. Easier and better are not the whys behind this project. It's just to see if we can do it. And I think we did. So let's take a look at the render real quick. And here we have this beauty here. So obviously construction is going to be a whole different story. The workflow and the processes for actually building this are a little bit different than what you're seeing here, because what I have to do is start off with flat stock. I have to mill those pockets in flat stock, fill them up with resin, right? then mill again to get back to a flat stock, then make the radius. So the workflow that I just showed you here gives us a complete picture of what it looks like, but it's really not how I mill. Now, the other thing too, is I'm gonna be exporting this as a DXF file or SVG file. That way I can actually offer this on my store for people who want to laser engrave this on a fretboard or people who just want to like a PDF to print out the grid in a one-to-one -one scale ratio to be able to put on their own and do whatever they want. Maybe they want to inlay it by hand or maybe they want to use the magic marker technique. Because this is a 25.5 inch scale, so it's a very standard scale that you can apply on any one of your fretboards. Again, very standard 42 millimeter nut, so it'll pretty much fit on any fretboard. But I also think I can offer like 3D files for this for those who want to experiment with printing in two colors their own fretboard. So I think there's a variety of really cool things to take this concept and this idea that I found on YouTube and make it real and make it accessible so people can actually explore this on their own. I hope you think this is also a really cool idea. I wanna thank you for watching. Take it easy.